So a double miracle in the gospel today, two stories that are literally woven together. We begin with the uh, synagogue official, then we have the woman with the hemorrhage, and then we return back to the synagogue official. And I think you all know this, most all of you should know this by, by this point, is that if you touched a diseased person, particularly certain kinds of diseases, in Jesus's day, you became ritually unclean, okay? And one of the conditions, whether it was a disease or not, that would always make a person ritually unclean would be to touch a woman while she was menstruating, while she was bleeding, okay? This woman had been menstruating for 12 years. She had a, a hemorrhage that had not ever gotten better. And so the story goes, she had suffered all of these years with this kind of, you know, female challenges, as we would say these days. And, uh, and, and uh, when Jesus touched her, did Jesus become unclean? No, he healed her. See, this is the touch of our Lord is that he isn't infected by the sin of the world, he heals the sin of the world. We, we get that, don't we? That that's kind of the ultimate point of the incarnation. Now, how is the disease of the world manifested? How is sin, I should say, manifested to us? Ultimately, it's manifested in one big thing. One big thing that we all face at the end of our 50 years or 60 years or 70 years or 80 years. What's the one big thing that's waiting for all of us that is ultimately the result of sin? What is it? Death. And so now we have a child. So we're going to see how these two miracles are working together. Jesus goes in and he touches the child. What? What's another thing that would make you ritually unclean would be to touch a dead body. But Jesus touches death, and what does he bring? He brings life. Now, again, these are lessons for us to kind of put into our, into our being. The child is not dead. What, was Je what did Jesus say? The child is not dead. She's what? Sleeping. The sleep of death. The sleep of death. Who here is going to wake up from the sleep of death? Anybody? All of us, right? That's our faith, isn't it? That we will be united with Christ in the resurrection. That's what we believe. That's what we're going to celebrate at Mass. When I, that when I, when I hold the host over the altar and I say, behold the Lamb of God, it's the living Lamb of God. It is Christ raised from the dead. It is the living bread of life that we receive. It is Christ who has defeated death and Christ who touches us in our sin, sin and death. He's not contaminated by us. He does what to us? He stops the flow of blood. He brings us from death to new life. And we walk by faith, not by sight. As I say at funerals sometimes, as I may say at the, I have a funeral today, Marilyn Hilly, God rest her soul. As I say, sometimes we, we bury a lot of people, especially as a priest, you bury a lot of people. You don't ever see anybody come out of the grave. I haven't yet anyway, but I believe she's not dead. She's sleeping, the sleep of death. And so that disease and death and all of those things, and they ridiculed him. They ridiculed him. And he said, get out. And he awakened her and said, give her something to eat. And I always think about the Eucharist from death to life, give her something to eat. And so, uh, and so, Let's pray today for the gift of faith, not sleeping, not dead, sleeping, the sleep of death, awaiting the resurrection 
and God willing, the resurrection to glory.